Hey everybody, welcome to episode 100 of Mike's Collection. Now, uh, I kind of wanted episode 100 to be something special. Uh, I just grew up reading comic books and every time there was an anniversary or you know a centennial issue like that, they did something special, whether it was a hologram cover or a double-sized issue or whatever. So I kind of felt like episode 100 should be something a little different than what you normally get from me. Um, but, uh, I'm embarrassed to admit I couldn't really think of anything to do. I even reached out to one, to, uh, to you guys on a prior video and said, if you have any suggestions, let me know. And I didn't really hear from anybody. So I wish this was a more exciting episode. I wish there was something that, uh, made it unique, but there won't be. And, uh, one of the reasons that you haven't seen a video from me for a couple of weeks is because, uh, way over... I don't know, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, I had pre-ordered the Snake Mountain playset from Super 7. And this is a Masters of the Universe playset. This is the most expensive toy I've ever bought. This thing was not cheap, and it is huge. And it was built um, to order, so you had to pay for it back then, you know, almost two years ago or whatever. And they would send it out to you when it was finally done. And we've been getting slow updates, you know, over time. Anyway, it's finally complete. And Super 7 has started mailing out their soup, the, uh, the Snake Mountain to the people that uh, backed it. And uh, there's already a few videos online. If you're curious to see what I'm talking about or what it looks like, you know, I recommend you check out Pixel Dan's unboxing of it, all that stuff. There's, some, there's a bunch of videos already. So it's not like mine would have been particularly unique. But because this was going to be such a big, cool toy, like I said, the most expensive toy I've ever purchased and hopefully ever will, um, I thought it would be fun for my 100th video to do an unboxing slash review video of Snake Mountain. So even though that wouldn't be that different from what I usually do, it would be uh, you know such a unique, special product that that would kind of make me feel like, sure, I did something special for episode 100. But I'm in Canada, so... Everybody that's received their Snake Mountain already, I think, are from the States. You know, the things come to Super 7 first that's in the U.S. and they ship it out um, to the American customers. So guys like me and in other countries overseas and stuff, we're probably going to be waiting a little bit longer. Um, I got an email saying that, that it will probably come in December. So I thought what I would do is, okay, I'll just, I won't post any videos for a while. That way Snake Mountain will be episode 100. Because the last video I did was episode 99. But um, the problem with that is, is I don't like to open any of my toys until I show you them on a video in the box. And then I take them out of the box and I review them. And in the few weeks since I decided to hold off and wait for Snake Mountain, I've gotten a whole bunch of toys. So what I've been doing is I've been coming down here and shooting little intros showing you the item in the box. And then I turn off the video and I figure I'll do these later. I'll do. I'll show you all this stuff in episode 101 after I do my Snake Mountain. But I've just been getting way too much stuff. That episode 101 would be way too long. And also, I can't really put this stuff away up on the shelf uh, until I've shot a video and reviewed it. And uh, yeah, right now my desk is just crazy piled up with stuff because I have so much stuff to show you. So, fuck it. We're just going to do episode 100. This is episode 100. It's not special. Whatever. I'll review Snake Mountain when I get it. Maybe that'll be episode 101 or 102, 103. I don't know. Hopefully I'll get it soon. So yeah. Anyway, this is just going to be a video showing you a whole bunch of toys that I've gotten for the last couple of weeks. And I hope you enjoy it regardless, even if it's nothing particularly special. So um, like I said, I've already shot intros for a bunch of stuff I've got the last couple of weeks. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the stuff I got most recently. So this is stuff just from the last couple of days. And then I'm going to just cut back to the footage I shot of me showing you the other items in the boxes. So you're going to see me go through some outfit changes and my facial hair will probably come and go as uh, the videos are shot on different days. So I'll show you all that stuff so you see everything I got in the box. And then we'll cut to, um, you know, just the close-up of the toys and I'll show you everything and I'll kind of review them outside of the box at the end. So yeah, let's take a look at what I've got recently. So I got a whole bunch of Funko Pops. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things I'll get. This video is going to have Marvel Legends, Funko Pops, Star Wars Black Series, uh, NECA Godzilla's, uh, Transformers, you name it. A whole bunch of stuff. 
But uh, yeah, so this is the stuff I got most recently. So a bunch of Funko Pops will be featured in this video. So this one here, I've got this pink little Batman. And this one was released um, to raise awareness for breast cancer. Um, so yeah, it was in celebration of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So they actually did a few figurines in the pink with the pink box and the paint, uh, the pink paint deco. But uh, I only bought the Batman. I kind of have a collection within a collection when it comes to Funko Pops. I love buying different Batman. And actually, so I'm going to jump and I'll show you another Batman I recently got. So this here is Batman. Now this is him as Ebenezer Scrooge. Again, they released a bunch of holiday themed DC Funko Pops. So you see here, he's dressed with his little, I don't know, pajamas. And on the back of the box, you can see that there is a Wonder Woman, a Harley Quinn, a Superman, Joker, Flash, and they've all, they're dressed as Santa Claus or reindeer or whatever. Now again, I'm not gonna buy any of the other ones. I just bought the Batman specifically because I like to collect Batman and all these weird, crazy little outfits. But even though I collect all these Batmans, you can see, you'll see, you'll see them better when I open the box up. But you can see he's got his body, he's holding the candle, he's got the pajamas on, and so that's all well and good. But my favorite Batmans to collect are the standard Batman that were based on the original Batman Funko Pop. So like this pink one here, you see he's just got that standard squatty little pose. There, I have a ton of Batmans that look just like this, except they're in different colors. And those are actually my preferred ones to collect. I like just the standard squatty pose. But these ones here with the unique body sculpts are kind of fun too. So there you go. So two new Batman. Then I've got uh, Jan Levinson from The Office. So this was, uh, you know, Michael's old boss and then love interest. Uh, if you're a fan of The Office, you know this character. I love The Office. I will buy, you know, every character that they put out. Now... Interestingly enough, on this particular wave, you'll see that there's also Dwight as the Scranton Strangler and Michael in a straitjacket. There's also a new Jim with kind of his less uh, dopey haircut. Now, I won't necessarily get all of those ones. I've actually seen the Michael and Dwight and passed on them. As much as I love The Office, I don't necessarily feel like I need a figurine of every single character in every single scene that they were ever in. And that seems that that's what Funko is kind of doing. They've already put out a ton of different Michaels. And, you know, not to say I won't get one or two of them, but, uh, yeah, he wore that straight jacket for one scene out of nine seasons, you know, for all of two minutes. I don't really need a figurine of that. Same as, I think the Dwight as the Scranton, Scrang as Scranton Strangler is a pretty great figure, but, uh, yeah, I don't really need that one either. But Jan, this is the first time she got a figure. It's a unique figure, so I'm really happy to add this character to my collection. What else do we got? Uh, this is one I was quite excited about. So this is Nancy from The Craft, the original Craft. I know they just re-released kind of like a remake or a reboot or a sequel. I don't know. I haven't watched it. I haven't heard it's very good, so I probably won't watch it. But I really loved the original Craft movie that came out in, I think, 96, 95, 96, something like that. And that would have been right about when I was graduating high school. And uh, I remember seeing Fariza Balk playing Nancy. And I was in love with her. I thought she was fantastic. So there's four characters, like four main girls from the craft. You can get all four of them. But uh, I'm only interested in really getting Nancy. These are the kind of movies that I really uh, like Funko Pops for. Um, because I don't necessarily like to collect figurines that are photorealistic. Like if I wanted, like I love Die Hard. But I don't really need a little six inch photorealistic Bruce Willis that looks just like him with his tank top and his bare feet. Um, I don't really care about that, but getting a Funko Pop, which is kind of a cartoony little representative of, of that movie that I love, that's what I like my Funko Pops to be. I don't really like it when they make Funko Pops of G.I. Joe and Masters of the Universe because I already have massive collections of G.I. Joe and Masters of the Universe toys, so I don't really feel I need cutesy versions of them, and yet I buy them anyway. But this is the kind of thing that I really appreciate Funko Pop for because if they did make, you know, like a six-inch... Nancy figure. I don't know if I'd really need that in my collection. She'd be kind of an oddball. I wouldn't really know where to put her. But as a Funko Pop, I think it's kind of perfect. I can represent Nancy on my shelf so everybody knows that I'm a craft fan, specifically a Nancy fan. So yeah, this is a pretty cool figure. And we'll take a closer look at her a little bit later. Um, next up, I've got uh, James Bond. So I've already got a few James Bonds. I've got a James Bond that represents the Sean Connery, the Roger Moore, and the... Uh, 
why am I blanking on his name right now? Golden Eye Bond. Um, and I actually already have a Daniel Craig one. I have the Daniel Craig one from Quantum of Solace. So I didn't really particularly need this James Bond figure. This is from the new movie, No Time to Die. That's not out yet. It should have been, but it got delayed because of COVID. Anyway, the reason I pulled the trigger on this one is because I just kind of like that he's in a casual outfit. You can probably see it better on the drawing. But he's wearing like a sweater because it looks like a lot of this movie takes place in kind of like a, the Arctic or somewhere snowy, somewhere cold. So yeah, he's kind of bundled up with his little sweater turtleneck. And all the other James Bond figures I have are all in like tuxedos and stuff. So I kind of thought this was kind of neat. So this is my second Daniel Craig Funko Pop. And yeah, he looks pretty cool. Um, now, I mentioned about how I don't like getting Funko Pops based on G.I. Joes and whatnot. And yet, I've got Zartan. So this is the uh, Master of Disguise. He's kind of a mercenary. He's the leader of his own biker gang called the Dreadnoughts. But he's essentially a member of Cobra. They were always working with Cobra. So yeah, he's a bad dude from the G.I. Joe universe. And I really don't know if I'll keep buying these G.I. Joe characters if they continue to make dozens and dozens of them. I recently saw Beachhead, uh, and I passed on him. Not that Beachhead isn't a cool character. It's a really cool-looking character, but I kind of... He's an exclusive, so he was priced a little bit more expensive. And I was like, I don't think I'm, I don't think I want to drop that much money on just another G.I. Joe Funko Pop. I'll maybe get my favorite characters, but I don't think I can commit to buying all of them. So there you go. There's our tan. He's pretty cool. And lastly, of the Funko Pops that I have here is kind of a weird one, but this is Glowworm. So if you're not familiar with Glowworm, he is, uh, well, he was a little plush toy that came out in the, I want to say probably pretty early 80s, maybe mid 80s. And basically what he was, is he was about uh, gay big and he had a plush body and a hard plastic head. And there was basically a flashlight inside of him. So you put batteries in the flashlight and when you hugged him, his the light shone up through his plastic face. So it was kind of a, he had a yellow plastic face and with the flashlight going it glowed kind of orange and then he had this long uh, kind of plush nightcap and I had that when I was a little kid you know I probably would have been six seven or something when I got that doll maybe or maybe even younger I don't know depending on what year it came out but anyway I loved Glowworm. I thought he was super cute um, they went on and they made a cartoon of him with his glow friends at one point uh, and my younger siblings were all into those so they all had other Glowworm figures but they had glow bug and glow butterfly or whatever but the original glow worm who was a uh, glow worm uh he was my favorite and i loved him i didn't hold on to too many of my stuffed animals from childhood i used to have a ton of them but i got rid of all of them i held on to like my two or three favorites but i didn't keep glow worm i kind of wish i did anyway so having an opportunity to add glow worm to my collection again is a funko pop which is probably better. Like, it's not like I would go out and buy a used glowworm from somewhere because it's a stuffed animal. They're probably pretty gross. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm happy to get this glowworm. I think he's pretty adorable. And he glows in the dark. So that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to show you that later once we look at him outside of the box. All right, so that's Funko Pops. What else have I got here? So I got the last G.I. Joe figure I needed from G.I. Joe Classified Wave 1 or Wave 2, I guess it was. So yeah, Wave 1 I think had five figures, and then Wave 2 had Cobra Commander, Gung Ho, and the Red Ninja. Now the Red Ninja has been hard to find because he is the only army builder released so far, meaning that, you know, if you were to play G.I. Joe or if you watch the G.I. Joe cartoon, there would be a ton of these guys running around. They're soldiers, it's not like a named particular character. And I also think he's only one per box. So with Wave 2, if you ordered a whole box, you'd get two Cobra Commanders, which you probably don't need, Two Gung Ho's, which you probably don't need, and only one Red Ninja. So when stores would order these in, not only would fans scoop him up the fastest, but they would scoop him up multiple times. So he's been kind of hard to come by. I have not seen one in stores yet, so I had to order this one online from Big Bad Toy Store. So yeah, I'm pretty happy to snag him. So there you go. That's the Red Ninja. Now for Star Wars Black Series, I've got... So this is Commander Pyre. So I bought this here at... Toys R Us here in Canada because we still have our Toys R Us's. I don't know where you can get this in the States. Like it's based on Galaxy's Edge, which is that like Disney theme park in uh, in Disney World, I guess. Um, and I've bought a few of these figures recently, these Galaxy's Edge ones. I got the Mountain Trooper and uh, Commander Cardinal. Um, 
So I don't know what the deal is. Maybe in America you can only buy these at the theme parks. I don't know. Or maybe you can get them exclusive somewhere, Walgreens or something. But anyway, here in Canada, we can only get them at Toys R Us. And this guy is essentially a gold version of the modern Stormtrooper from the like the sequel trilogy. So he looks a lot like uh, Captain Phasma, who was basically a Stormtrooper just in silver. And now this guy is in gold. And he looks pretty cool. So yeah, we'll take a look at him outside of the box shortly. And I also have another variation of the Stormtrooper. This is the Clone Trooper. Specifically the Camino version of the Clone Trooper. So this guy, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, I don't think he appeared in the uh, the movie. Like uh, with the new Star Wars Black series, they have these uh, these color coding. So this yellow color coding, this says it's based on the Clone Wars. So it's not based on the movie Attack of the Clones. This is based on the animated series, the Clone Wars, which I didn't watch. So I assume all the different clones had different colors, maybe to correspond with which planet they were posted on. Kamino is one of the planets that was introduced to us in Attack of the Clones. So this guy's got kind of a cool gray deco on him. Makes him a little different from other clone troopers in my collection. And as you see, he's got that nice kind of yellow slash black and white packaging that we're seeing on these new Star Wars Black Series figures. So he's pretty cool. And uh, what else we got here? Um, we got a Godzilla figure. And not exactly a Godzilla figure. It's based on Godzilla King of the Monsters that came out a couple of years ago. Um, so if you've watched any of my prior videos, you know I have a bunch of the Godzillas that NECA made. But I didn't buy the other two creatures. They did Mothra and they did Rodan. The reason I didn't, even though I'm a big monster fan, is for one, these characters were so much smaller than Godzilla, and yet they were the same price. So it seemed kind of hard to justify dropping these 30 bucks on these characters. Like Mothra especially was only like this big compared to a Godzilla that's like, you know, this big. And so Rodan, he's uh, he's probably the same size of, as a Godzilla with the wingspan. Um, that's a picture of the figure there. But like the, the body of the figure, like the actual monster, he's only about that big. So again, I had a hard time justifying it. Plus, the other big monster in this movie was King Ghidorah, and they didn't make him. So that really bothered me. It's like, well, why even bother getting Rodan and Mothra if I'm not going to get King Ghidorah? I'm not going to get a whole set. But uh, as time went on, I kind of regretted not getting these things, and they became a lot harder to find. Fortunately, Big Bad Toy Store got a little restock of these things, so I was able to grab this. So generally, these NECA Godzilla figures, they show the movie poster on the front, but obviously they used the movie poster for the Godzilla figure. So when it came to Rodan and Mothra, they just kind of found a cool image from the movie. And man, this Rodan looked cool. I loved the way he looked in that movie. I wish he was featured a little bit more in the film. But yeah, that, the fact that he was made of this like kind of molten rock and stuff, I loved it. So like all the NECA figures, he's got a Velcro box. So you can pop that open. And there you see an image of the figure all put together. So you can see he's got the large wings and then he's got a display base, which is kind of the top of the volcano he came out of in the movie. And it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. But inside the packaging, he's kind of all folded up. I'm going to have to attach his wings and attach them to the base. He just looks like kind of a mess of rocks in there. So yeah, we'll take a closer look at him and get them all assembled shortly. All right, two more things. Um, so these are some Transformers. So this guy here, I just picked up the other day. So this is Decepticon Airwave uh, from the Earthrise line. So he transforms into... It's like an aircraft carrier. There's a shot of it on the back. A very little aircraft carrier. And he's got little cars on him instead of airplanes. So, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this character. Um, but he looks kind of cool. I like his like little flat-headed design there. I like his color scheme. It looks very kind of industrial. So, uh, yeah. I thought he seemed cool. And as I've talked about before with Transformers, when figures like this come out... And I think, you know what, I don't know that character. I could probably pass on buying it. I don't need it. Um, I buy the Transformer comic books from IDW, and they constantly introduce characters into the comic book, and they make them really cool. So it would be just my luck if I pass on this figure. Then six months from now, when he's impossible to find, he'd appear in the comic book, and he, I'd fall in love with him. I'd be like, this guy's so cool. I should have bought that toy. And then I'd end up having to chase him down on eBay. So now I just buy all the Transformers just in case I end up liking them later. So there you go. So that is, uh, what's his name? Airwave. So not bad. We'll take a closer look at him shortly too. And the last one is 
Um, I've been collecting the reaction figures, the Transformer reaction figures specifically from Super 7, which are little five points of articulation figures. Um, I don't have any handy to show you right now. But they're the size of like vintage Star Wars figures. They're like three and three quarter inches. They only have five points of articulation, which means they move with their arms and their legs and their heads, and that's it. Um, so they've been doing the Transformers. I've got all... 16 of them, I think. 14 or 16 of them over there. Anyway, the last one I got, is their most recent one, is Devastator. And I know it might be hard to tell because I don't have another one here to compare to. But because Devastator is such a large character in the Transformers like mythology, this is quite a bit bigger than the standard reaction figures. When we do a look at things outside of the packaging, I'll have one here for comparison. But the blister cards on most of the other Transformers will only come up to about here. And the figures are probably only about this tall. So he's a good, I wouldn't say double the size, but he's big enough that, uh, you know, it's a cool effect that you have the combiner kind of towering over the other figures. So, like, as is the case with all these reaction figures, I love the packaging. I love the look of the figure. I have a really cool Devastator figure up over there, but they're so, just like the vintage figure, he's so big and he's made up of multiple parts because all the other figures combine to make him. But he's hard to play with. You pick him up and his arm falls off. He's very finicky. I'm really excited to get a, my hands on this guy once I open up the package because you can see he, he's finally a Devastator you can you can play with. You can move him around. You don't have to worry about him falling apart. Uh, he's, he's really cool. So I'm, I'm quite excited about this guy. So there you go. That's all my most recent stuff. So what I'm going to do now is jump to the video footage I shot of a bunch of other toys in their packaging. And then we'll be back. And we'll take a look at everything outside of the packaging. All right, so here we go. So first, maybe let's take a look at a couple of Funko Pops I got. So here is Shipwreck from G.I. Joe. So pretty standard box for these guys. Although what's kind of different is on the back, usually if it's a line of figures, it shows all the different G.I. Joe figures on the back. But this one doesn't. It just has kind of this old uh, like artwork straight from the 80s of Shipwreck. And then a picture of the pop. So it's a little different than what we normally see. Now you'll notice he's got his uh, his parrot Polly on his shoulder here. Which, uh, yeah, seems like a real missed opportunity that we don't have a Polly in this package. Either sculpted on his shoulder or maybe a little separate Polly would have been kind of nice. But anyway, so that's shipwreck right inside of the box. Then I also have this Dracula. And my friend picked this up for me at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart. And apparently this is an exclusive to Shoppers Drug Mart. Uh, so you see that sticker here, only at Shoppers. Uh, I don't know if Shoppers is only in Canada, or maybe they have that everywhere, I don't know. But uh, it's just a drugstore here in Canada, at least. And uh, it does show on the back all of the different Universal Monsters in the collection. Now, uh, the only one I have from the original lineup is the Wolfman. I never bothered with any of the other ones. I'm a big fan of the Universal Monsters. But when these first came out years ago, um, I was already, I had a bunch of the Universal Monsters in the reaction figure format, and I also had them in the Mego doll style format, and Pops were still kind of new, and I wasn't convinced that I was going to collect a whole lot of them. You know, I already had these characters in multiple formats, and I was like, am I going to just buy these guys over and over and over again? So Wolfman's always been my favorite Universal Monster, so I only bought him. But in the years that have passed since, Pops have obviously uh, you know, stood the test of time and my pop collection has become quite big and I do actually kind of wish I had the other monsters from this collection. So the Dracula you see on the back of the box there, he's got kind of a bluish skin and his hands are out like he's reaching for you and he's got his mouth open with his fangs. It's not focusing very well but trust me that's what it is. Anyway so when my buddy called me and told me that they had the Dracula pop at uh, Shoppers and he asked if... Uh, I wanted him to pick it up for me. He described it and said he's got kind of like white skin and he's holding a candle. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a totally different Dracula than the one I've seen. So yeah, grab it for me. So that's what we've got here. There's Dracula. We'll take a look at him when I open him up a little bit later. So also, I've got Tebow, which is one of the Ewoks. So this is the, uh, the Star Wars Black series. So this is their new style of packaging where every movie has its own kind of color border to kind of have its own theme. So... The Ewoks appeared in Return of the Jedi, so green is the color for Jedi. And there's some nice artwork of Tebow on the side. And again, you've got that green hue that carries up into the black and white artwork. 
looks pretty nice. On the back, same artwork of Tebow, just kind of a close-up shot of the face. And a little bit of a bio there as well. What does it say about Tebow? An Ewok scout. Tebow sounded the horn, summoning the Ewoks to fight the stormtroopers during the Battle of Endor. So there you go. I guess that's all you need to know about Tebow. So there he is inside the box. We'll take a look at him once I get him opened up. Now I also have a new Transformer. Now this is from the Transformers uh, Select series. And I don't know why they put them in these boxes. Like there's nothing really nice looking about these boxes. You know, it's just, it looks like the kind of just standard box. That I'd open this up and I'd pull a cool carded action figure out. Um, but yeah, when you find these in stores, this is all it says. So you can see this is Decepticon exhaust. But if you don't know who exhaust is or what, like there's no way to look at what this figure is. There's not a picture of him anywhere on the box. It's crazy. But uh, anyway, I knew what exhaust was. I ordered them online, so this showed up, and you open that up, and there's the figure. There's no uh, there's no additional packaging to take out. I just got to snap them out of this plastic tray, and that's all there is to it. So yeah, this box is not much to look at, but since I'm shooting this video to show you everything in boxes, I figured I'd show you that one too. Um, now I've got some Marvel Legends here as well. So this is Toxin. So he's from the Venom series. And you'll notice this is a deluxe figure. So rather than the standard smaller box for the $30 figure, this was like a $45 figure and he's much bigger. This is the kind of figure you would typically expect to see as a Build-A-Figure. So yeah, there he is in the package. He's got that kind of white Venom logo that we saw on the wave of Venom figures uh, a couple years ago. I've got to move this light because this glare is pretty bad. No, that didn't, that didn't help. Anyway. You get the idea. There's the package. Some cool art of Toxin. Same art on both sides. Then on the back, you get a shot of the figure and a little bit of a bio. What do they say about Toxin? The 1,000th... 1,000th? 1,000th. Why can I not say that right now? Anyway. The 1,000th symbiote in a lineage that includes carnage and venom toxin is feared by many to be the strongest and most dangerous so there you go i'm pretty excited to open him up and these other two packs are both pretty cool so uh maybe i'll start with this one so this is a two pack with the x-men rogue and pyro from the brotherhood of evil mutants so this rogue is not one i necessarily felt I needed. I probably wouldn't have bought this figure if it was packaged alone. I already have a rogue figure in her kind of what I feel is more iconic like Jim Lee designed costume from the 90s. But uh, this is the only way you can get a pyro in the Marvel Legends series and he's a character I've been wanting for a while. So if it means getting a second rogue to get pyro, sure why not. At least it's not a redo of the rogue I already have. It is an entirely new costume, a whole new figure. So that's pretty cool. Anyway on the side here you see a nice a uh, picture of Rogue on the side. You get a nice picture of Pyro. And on the back, you get a big close-up shot of the two of them. So yeah, Pyro looks pretty cool. He's making a little fiery version of himself using his flame powers. So yeah, not bad. Not much else to say on the box. There's, there's no bios or anything to read. So let's move on to the last thing I've got here. So this is another two-pack of X-Men. So this is Storm and Thunderbird. So this is based on their first appearances in Giant Size X-Men. And so you see Storm here, she's got a couple options with her cape. Um, looks like one maybe is just kind of hanging flat and one of them is kind of flowing. Same as with her head. She's got one where her hair is just kind of sitting flat. She's got one where her hair is kind of blowing in the wind. I'm not sure which one I'll display her with. I guess I'll decide that once I open her up. And there's Thunderbird, looking great. I just recently got an action figure of his brother Warpath. So it's nice to get the two of them so close together. And on the side, there is a picture of Thunderbird, picture of Storm on this side, and on the back, get a nice shot of the two of them. So uh, yeah, that's all there is to see you know, on these boxes, not much more to say. So yeah, I can finally stop filming, I can finally open these guys up, and we'll be back and we'll finish this video at another time. But, thanks. Okay, a few more days have passed. 
since I unboxed those last things and I still haven't shot the rest of this video yet. But I've got something else. Uh, this just came in the mail today and I also want to open this up so I can play with these figures. So I'm just going to show you this inside of the packaging. So this is a new three pack of X-Men Marvel Legends. This was an exclusive to Amazon. So I purchased this from Amazon when this went up uh, for pre-order earlier in the summer. And uh, yeah, now it has finally arrived. So I think this might actually be my first Marvel Legends three pack. They have released a couple of them previously, but uh, yeah, I haven't picked any up. So for me, the real draw for this package was Nimrod. So Nimrod, he is a character first appeared in the X-Men right around the time when I started collecting Marvel Comics. My brother collected X-Men, so I remember him getting those early issues with Nimrod. Um, and yeah, he's just a really cool design character. And I don't, I don't think they've ever made a figure of him before. So this is just a big, bulky, awesome figure. And uh, yeah, I was very happy that they were releasing him. I didn't love the fact that he was in a three-pack with these two other figures because this Psylocke, uh, it looks like a nice a nice Psylocke figure, but I'm pretty happy with the previous Psylocke figure I have. So if they had released this figure individually, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And then this guy here, like he looks cool. This is Phantom X. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Could be Phantom X or who knows. But anyway, I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with this guy. Like I know he's been around for quite a few years now, um, but I don't think I've ever read a comic book with him in it. Um, like he looks cool, but at the same time, the design seems a little lazy. He kind of just looks like Storm Shadow or something, kind of a movie Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes mixed together. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would have bought him either if I didn't need to, like if he didn't come in like with a Build-A-Figure piece or something like that. So the fact that this set costs as much as three figures and I only really wanted one of the figures, it's not great. However, it's a figure I really wanted and he's a big full-size figure. He probably would have sold at a higher price point had he been sold individually anyway. So, uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this pack. So there's not much to see in the box. On the side, you've got a nice picture of Phantom X there. Nice artwork. Uh, you got Psylocke on the other side. And then on the back, you've got all three. So a nice looking box, but there's no bios or anything like that to read here. Not much on the bottom. Not much on the top. And anyway, so there you go. My dog's freaking out, so i got to go into that anyway. So there it is in the box. Next time I see you, we'll have this opened up, and we'll take a look at the figures outside of the packaging. Okay, I'm back again. A few more days have passed since I opened that uh, Nimrod 3-pack, and I've got a couple more figures that I want to show you in the packaging before I ever get around to finishing this video. So i got another Marvel Legend. This one, I believe, is a Walgreens exclusive in the States. But here in Canada, I was able to get it through EB Games. So this is the Silver Centurion Iron Man. So uh, to probably most folks, this is kind of an odd looking Iron Man with the red and the silver. Because Iron Man is usually pretty famously wears his red and gold. Um, he's had a couple other color variations over the years. This was one of them that he wore for a short while. But the thing with this uh, armor is... Is this was the outfit he was wearing when I started collecting comic books in the 80s. So the first Iron Man comic book, not really that I bought, but uh, I've told you in the past how me and my brother kind of collected everything together. So I collected one half of the Marvel comic books and he collected the other. So my brother Doug collected Iron Man. But the first Iron Man comic book he bought, and which I would have read because we read all of each other's stuff, was uh, back when Iron Man was wearing the Silver Centurion armor. So this is kind of, in my mind, the main Iron Man. I've always loved this armor. And uh, I have a, a version of this figure in the three and three quarter inch format. But uh, yeah, I really wanted one in this, uh, this current six inch Marvel Legends line. And uh, the base figure is built off of the, uh, the like, 80th anniversary Iron Man they did last year, which was a great figure. So it's a really great base to build this new one off of. So there you see him in the box. He was a little bit more expensive than your average figure. Here in Canada, Marvel Legends cost 30 bucks. This guy here was 35 bucks. I guess, you know, they refer to him as Deluxe. I don't really see how they get away with that. Sure, he's got a couple of extra pieces, but uh, I wouldn't say he has much more than a normal figure comes with. 
And he also doesn't come with any sort of build a figure piece. So it kind of sucks that they charge you an extra five bucks for these figures for really no apparent reason. But anyway, you see the package here is pretty standard. It looks like it could have went into any standard wave of Marvel Legends. There's no color variation or anything particularly special about the box. Um, you've got that nice artwork on the side of the Silver Centurion Iron Man. Same thing on both sides. Picture of the figure on the back. You know, nice full body shot. A uh, little bio there. What does it say? Tony Stark jets back from obscurity in Silver Centurion armor. A breathtaking technological achievement equipped with a unibeam, force field, and rapid fire pulse bolts. Cool. So anyway, that's him in the box, and we'll take a look at him outside the box in a little bit. And another new figure I got this week uh, is a Star Wars Black Series figure. I wasn't actually looking for this figure, um, but I stumbled across it in an EB Games when I was actually looking for the Iron Man. And uh, so the first location I went to, they didn't have anything, but they did have this guy. So I grabbed him, and after I bought him, I ended up calling another location to confirm if they had the Silver Centurion Iron Man, which they did. So yeah, this guy here is a clone trooper. Um, now this guy has the kind of blue highlights on his armor. Um, I don't really follow the Clone Wars very closely. Like, I saw all the live-action movies, and I watched... Uh, I watched the original... Uh, Clone Wars animation, the one that was done by the Samurai Jack guy, but I didn't watch really any of the CG animated show until the last couple of episodes, which tied in directly with uh, Revenge of the Sith. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar with all the various clones and what all the different armor colors mean. The standard clone from the first movie, Attack of the Clones, they all just had like the white armor on there. In the next movie, there were some more variations on that. Um, but yeah, the only clone I have currently in my army is a clone with the red highlights. I don't have the solid white clone. Uh, there's one with green. Um, I think the next one coming out is the one that's got the, uh, the face all painted red. Um, but anyway, so I think I knew this one was coming out, but I kind of forgot about it. But when I saw it on the shelf, I have a hard time passing up on any Stormtrooper variation, so I snagged it. So the box here, nothing super special, but it's sporting the new... Black Series packaging, where every movie has a color theme. So because this one is from Attack of the Clones, you can see that right there, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, it's written in red. So every figure from that movie will have the red accent on the box, where I recently got Tebow, he was from Return of the Jedi, so he had green. There's a different color for every movie or every series. Uh, on the side of the box, again, you get a black and white photo of the character, but the red kind of like fades up into there like there's kind of a red mist so that's the same thing we saw on the tebow box and the other boxes and on the back you get that same artwork a little bit more of a close-up uh, a little bit of a bio here what does it say so phase one clone trooper lieutenant throughout the clone wars clone troopers fought the battle droids of the separatists along the galaxy they were loyal to their jedi generals and the supreme chancellor so there you go that is uh, pretty much all you need to know about Clown Trooper Lieutenant. So again, I'm learn I didn't even realize it said Lieutenant there. So maybe that's what the blue signifies. He's a different rank than my red guy. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, we'll take a look at him outside of the box. I assume he's probably going to be more of the same uh, as I have a number of Stormtroopers and stuff already. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. So there you go. Okay, I just got back from another toy hunt. And I've got four more new toys to show you. Um, so I'm just going to show you these things in their packages, and we'll look at them outside of the package later. So first up, I have from the Star Wars Black series. This is Captain Cardinal. So this here, you'll notice it's got the stamp that this is from uh, the Galaxy's Edge, which is like the Star Wars theme park in Disneyland. So I'm not familiar with this character, but you can see he kind of looks like Captain Phasma, who had that kind of cloak off to the side, except instead of silver armor, this dude's got uh, kind of crimson red armor. So pretty standard box. Nice little shot of him in the corner. Nothing on the side. The side here, all the uh, Galaxy's Edge toys have this kind of weird, I don't know, it kind of looks like, I don't know what you'd call that. It looks kind of militaristic, but not really. It doesn't really remind me of Star Wars. It looks kind of more earthbound, but regardless. And then on the back, you got a picture of the face, and you've got a little bit of a bio. So what it says here is Captain Cardinal served as Armitage Hux's personal guard 
as he was among the orphans that Brendan Hux took in to create the First Order from. All right, there you go. Captain Cardinal. Uh, next up, I've got a couple figures from the new Venom wave of Marvel Legends. So first up, we've got Venom. So this is based on his appearance from the uh, Tom Hardy Venom movie from a couple years ago. So pretty standard packaging. It's got the Venom logo that we saw on the movie. Then there's uh, kind of a picture of Venom's face, but it's extreme close-up. It's almost hard to tell what you're looking at there. But it's kind of the side of Venom's face with his tongue out and his teeth showing. It looks pretty, uh, pretty cool. Same thing on the other side. Then on the back shot of the Venom figure, as well as a little bio. Failed reporter Eddie Brock is hijacked by an alien entity that takes a liking to Earth and decides to protect it. So there you go. There's Venom. And the only other one I've got from that wave today is Carnage. So you can see the package is a little different on this one. It's white packaging instead of the black. Um, this is what the packaging for the wave looks like for all the other figures. The movie Venom is kind of a separate thing. Like you'll notice the Venom figure, he's got some extra hands and an extra head for this figure, but he doesn't have any Build-A-Figure part. So that kind of separates him from the rest of the group. Whereas Carnage, he has an alternate head for himself, but he also has the uh, Venom pool head. So that's the head for the Build-A-Figure of the wave. And so on the side of the package, you get some really nice artwork. Of kind of the contemporary carnage and on the back again you get a shot of the figure a little teeny bio and there you can see the other figures in the wave and if you collect them all you can build that venom pool now I'm unsure if I'm gonna buy all the figures in this wave um, I already have plenty of venom figures and a couple of carnage figures but I really like those characters and I think these are nice new versions of those characters um, I'm also pretty excited to get Phage. He's one of the other original uh, symbiotes, um, and I've never had a figure of him. So he's the, uh, the yellow symbiote, so he, he's going to look cool on the shelf. But then the other three are symbiote versions of Miles Morales, of uh, Spider-Gwen, and a new version of Morbius. I think they're all decent figures, but uh, I don't know if they're essential to my collection. And I also, I don't, I've never read a comic book with Venom pool in it. Um, I'm sure it was just kind of a throwaway character for one issue. Like, it's a really nice looking sculpted figure, but uh, he's not a character I have any attachment to. And if I can save myself the hundred bucks by not buying those other three figures, maybe I should do that. But we'll see. So, anyway, there's Carnage. And the last one I have to show you today is I have been looking for a couple of months for the Masters of the Universe Origins figures, and I have not seen a single one of them in any store. Today I came across my first one. It's not really the one I was hoping for. I kind of want to get some of the figures so I can actually get a feel for them and decide if I'm really going to collect the line or not. But today I found Battle Cat and I just couldn't pass this up. There's only one left on the shelf and uh, he, like, he looks cool. The packaging's cool. You can see that kind of like vintage style artwork on the top with He-Man sitting atop Battle Cat with battle armor off to the side. Looks really cool. And then on the back you got some more cool artwork with He-Man riding Battle Cat, attacking Skeletor. There you see the other figures available in Wave 1, which I have not seen anywhere, as well as uh, Prince Adam with the Sky Sled. I haven't seen that anywhere. And just explains to you that you can take Battle Cat's armor on and off. So, uh, yeah, there's the box is pretty simple. Like There's not much uh, to it anywhere else, um, but it's got that just great 80s style artwork there. Uh, I'm actually not even sure I'm going to open this guy. I probably will once I get the other figures. I'll want to display them together. But as for right now, um, I already have the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat out on display. I also have the 2000X version of Battle Cat. He's in a bin with my 2000X toys. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just kind of really like the box on this guy so much. I'm tempted to just display it as is. So I'm not sure if I'll open him up for this video or not. Uh, I guess we'll see when we get to that point. But anyway, pretty cool. I'm happy to have finally found this guy. So there you go. Okay, so I've shown you everything inside of the box. So now I can finally show you these things outside of the box. And we're going to try to move relatively quickly because I've already wasted so much time showing you everything still in the packaging that this video is going to end up being way too long. So here's the uh, Ebenezer Scrooge version of Batman. 
You see, he comes with the display base. I wish all the Funko Pops did. I don't know why they only package them with certain figures, but whatever. Anyway, you can see he's got these cute little bat slippers on. I like that. A uh, little candle there. The only articulation is head moves side to side. But, uh, you know, it's kind of funny that Batman would wear his pajamas over his cowl and everything like that. But it's a cute little figure. So I like it. Uh, the other Batman I got is the, uh, the Breast Cancer Awareness Batman. So here he is in his pink. So this is a pretty standard Batman costume. Now this is what I was saying earlier, is that I really like to collect Batmans that are variations of that same Batman. Like if you see here, here's a Funko Pop I've had for a long time. So it's the exact same mold of that figure. He's just painted differently. So you've got kind of your classic, that's kind of the Adam West style Batman. Here you've got, again, the exact same figure, painted a little differently and kind of a more classic black Batman. And then I've got it in a bunch of crazy colors, like here's a rainbow Batman, and here's a glow-in-the-dark Batman. So I've probably got about 30 of these things, and uh, I really like getting all these different variations. So even though this Batman is cool, you know, he doesn't quite blend in with the other guys because he's got that different body type. So uh, that seems to be what Funko is leaning towards more these days. All the Batmans I've got recently have these uniquely sculpted bodies. And uh, so they're cool. It's still just not as fun. That's why I was glad to finally be able to get another one of these classic style Batman in the pink. All right. So now let's take a look at the James Bond. So here we go. This is James Bond from No Time to Die. So you can see there he's not formally dressed. And uh, like all the other James Bonds I have. So I mentioned I already have one of the Daniel Craig Bonds, so it looks like pretty much the same head sculpt. He's got the same hairdo, but uh, you can see how he's he's dressed up in a suit, which is what you expect with James Bond, and that's based on the Quantum of Solace movie. And then the other uh, James Bonds I mentioned, you know, they're all dressed up in their various tuxedos. So, uh, so there you go. So it's cool to add another Bond to the collection. Now, actually, there was a figure I did forget to show you in the box, but when I, a couple of days before I picked up this Bond, I actually picked up the villain from the new movie. So this here is Safin, as played by Rami Malek, who played uh, Freddie Mercury in the Queen movie last year, or the year before. Um, so yeah, he looks like a cool character. I like Bond villains that have kind of a unique look to them. I bought the pop figurines of Jaws and Odd Job, and you know, some of the other Bond villains that have really unique looks. And this guy looks like he uh, will blend in with them quite well. But I don't know anything about this character yet, obviously because the movie has been delayed. So you can tell he's got, he's kind of scarred up. He wears this mask. But one thing I don't love about this figure is he's wearing this big parka. Now, maybe he wears this throughout the movie and this is kind of his main outfit. But I'll be kind of annoyed that if it turns out that he's just wearing this parka for one specific scene and then for the rest of the movie he's running around with just the mask in a tuxedo or something because then they'll probably put out another pop figurine with the mask and the tuxedo and I would rather have the more iconic look and not something that's really scene specific. But uh, yeah, for at least for now, I don't know what it is. So uh, there's Safin and he looks pretty cool. So next up we'll take a look at the G.I. Joes. So this here is Shipwreck. So there's lots of nice little sculpted detail on him. Everything from his belt buckle to the pockets on his shirt. The way the rope, uh, he's got that nice texture to it. Little gun holster on his leg. So yeah, Shipwreck looks really great. He's got the tattoos on his arms. So I love that. So yeah, Shipwreck here is really cool. So as I said earlier, I don't know if I'm going to continue to buy every G.I. Joe character they put out. But Shipwreck has a unique enough look that I don't mind uh, picking him up. Now, just if you're not familiar with Shipwreck, I'm going to bring in a couple other Shipwreck figures here. So this is the original Shipwreck figure, which came out in, uh, what was it, 84 or 85. So you can see here, he's got his little mascot, Polly, that clips onto his arm. But you can definitely see the uh, resemblance to the two figures. And then here is a more modern version of Shipwreck that came out in like 2007. So again, sailor outfit, paired on his arm. He's got the tattoos on his forearm as well. Uh, it's a little hard to see because Polly's sitting on his arm here. Uh, but yeah, looks pretty great. So the uh, 
the pop figure is pretty consistent with that shipwrecks look over the years. Next up, we've got Zartan. So the Cobra Master Disguise. So he's got a really cool look. These kind of weird, like, almost like hockey pads. Kind of looks like something out of Mad Max, which is what the Dreadnoughts did kind of look like. Those other members, like Road Pig and Thrasher, that all look like they were extras from the Road Warrior. And one thing I like about this pop figurine is his backpack there. That's very true to the classic Zartan figure. It's got a nice glossy sheen to it. So yeah, Zartan looks really great. And just if we want to compare him, here is the original vintage Zartan figure. So again, you can see the similarities. He's got that backpack. Looks pretty great. And again, we'll bring in a more modern version of Zartan. This one came out in the later 2000s. And yeah, both of them are very true to the pop figurine. He's got that black eye makeup. He's got the black hood. You know, the bare midriff. All that craziness in G.I. Joe designs. So yeah, that's Zartan. Now next up, we'll take a look at uh, Jan from The Office. So you can see here she's got a candle in her hand and she's got a glass of wine. Both of those are great accessories. This particular Jan figure is based off a specific episode where uh, Michael and Jan had a dinner party. And Jan told them that she was had a candle company and she was trying to get them to... Uh, like buy her candles or invest in her candle business. And she was also pretty drunk on wine. So there was often times when she appeared in the show with her hair down. But for this specific episode, her hair was all bundled up like this in a bun. She had the wine, she had the candle. So yeah, looks great. And uh, yeah, if I had to pick one episode to base a figurine of Jan on, I think that's a probably a pretty good choice. Uh, so next up, let's take a look at Nancy from The Craft. So... There's a lot of nice details in this figure here. She's got her little mole there, which for the bulk has. She's got a nose ring. She's got this little crucifix earring. See, she's got the double crucifixes plus the little pentagram necklace, as well as a choker. There's a nice little texture to her shirt there. Boots, little laces detail. So yeah, it's a really nice figure. The hair, the way it's kind of just messy and all over the place. That could have been a pretty hard thing to capture because... If you look at the picture I posted of uh, Frizza Bulk earlier, her hair was pretty wild in that movie. But I think they did a pretty good job here. I think I can tell who this is at first glance. So yeah, if you're a fan of the craft, I think you'd be able to tell who this is. So yeah, they pulled that figure off pretty nicely. Um, two more to show you here. So Glowworm. So not much, not a whole lot more to say about Glowworm than I haven't already said. Loved this character from when I was a kid. Um, he does glow in the dark. I don't think I'll bother showing you, but basically it's this part of it, just his face, just like the vintage toy that glows. So if I were to turn out all the lights here, then yeah, his face would kind of glow orange. Um, I don't know, we could take a stab at it and see how it looks. So I can see that he's glowing here, but I don't know if you guys can really see that. You can't at all. So it's glowing, but it's faint. So never mind, let's turn the lights back on. So the last Funko Pop I have to show you is Dracula. So you can see here, he's got some nice details as well. He's got a little candle with him. Some nice details sculpted into his outfit. Now this is kind of bizarre. I just, out of these like 10 Funko Pops, three of them happen to be holding candles. So that's kind of strange. But uh, yeah, so he's got his cape there. I kind of like that this is a more chill version of Dracula. You know, it's not like he's burying his fangs or anything. This is more the version of Dracula that we first meet in the movie when he's still acting like a, uh, you know, a good host before he's trying to eat anybody. So yeah, I like this figure a lot, and I actually prefer it to the original Dracula that Funko released several years prior. All right, let's move on to the action figures now. So let's first take a look at the Cobra Red Ninja from the G.I. Joe Classified line. So... My first impressions is he looks pretty great, uh, and I did literally just open this toy uh, just now as I'm recording this. As you're aware, I've filmed the intro to this video over the course of several weeks, so some of these toys I have had opened before, and I've had time to kind of fiddle around with them and make up my mind about what I liked and what I didn't like. But uh, the first batch of toys I showed you at the start of this video are things that I just opened up now, so I haven't had any time to uh, really play around with this guy. But uh, let's see. Let's take a look at him. He's got some nice detail there. Again, I really need to do something about my lighting in these videos because it's it's not ideal. But anyway, yeah, lots of nice sculpted detail in that face mask there. 
it's kind of hard to tell if it's supposed to look like anything in particular. Like, if it's supposed to look like kind of a Japanese design or a skull or an animal of some sort. It looks like it's supposed to be something, but it isn't super clear as to what. Um, the details go, like, he's got a lot of detailed armor here. Lots of stuff going on. And he came with a bunch of weapons. Now, I loaded them onto him as best as I could. So he has this little backpack piece, and there was three slots available. Two of them were pretty round, and one of them was a narrow little slit. So his sword seemed to fit in nicely to the uh, the middle slit part. And then these two, uh, these two bladed weapons here, these seem to fit nicely there. Um, then on the back, you can see he had these two straps here, so I put his psi weapons in there, but you, these things here probably could have just easily went in there. Then he's also got these two axes, which I put in his hand. Uh, the last thing he has is this kind of bladed staff. Now, I'm not sure where that could go. He does have one other storage spot on his belt, and it's got kind of a narrow slot, so it looks like this could go in there, but then it's kind of stuck out kind of awkwardly. It doesn't go all the way through there, so I don't think I would display that there. Um... But anyway, it's nice that he has a lot of storage. I'm not a fan when figures have a ton of weapons and they can't hold on to them and they all have to get thrown into a spare parts bin. But, uh, so that aside, so that's not a big deal. The one thing I am really noticing about him is he feels really loose down here. Um, if I get a closer look at his, uh, his legs, you know, it might not be showing up very well on camera, but his legs almost seem to be out of their sockets. Now, you can kind of adjust it, maybe. Mm, I don't know. Like, it seems like you can drop the leg out of socket. I don't know if you're seeing that. And that might allow for better posability, which is great for ninjas if you want to do some crazy poses. I don't know if it's... I don't really like it, though. It's kind of weird. I'll be honest with you. But uh, he looks cool. And as far as the Red Ninja goes, like, he's kind of a weird choice. For the first army builder uh, in the classified series because he is not really a, a mainstay of G.I. Joe like he's not even really a Cobra trooper he's got a Cobra logo on his uh, mask there but Cobra did have what they called ninja vipers but those guys usually had turquoise outfits the red ninjas are kind of their own separate thing and they never looked like this like here's a couple variations of the red ninja and they were usually just kind of repaints of Storm Shadow figures. So this guy here is much more kind of a traditional ninja. Then you've got, uh, you know, this guy here. So this is based on the G.I. Joe, like, uh, retaliation movie line. So again, this was originally a Storm Shadow figure. They repaint it to look like a Red Ninja. So that's what I'm used to the Red Ninjas looking like. So this guy here, it's, uh, it's pretty strange, um, pretty unique. But I'm actually pretty happy with the change. Like, this isn't a character that I cared a whole lot about. And if it had just been a red Storm Shadow, I probably wouldn't have been very excited about getting him. But I think this new look is pretty cool. It's kind of closer to a Night Creeper, which were another group of ninjas in the G.I. Joe mythology. Um, but yeah, it's a cool, unique design. I like it. It looks different than any of the other classified figures I currently have on my shelf. Um, the posability, everything looks to be pretty standard. He's got that good ab crunch there, spins at the waist, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. All that jazz, good range of motion on the head. Uh, the only thing that really kind of bothers me is that the loose lower half. But uh, as far as sculpting and paint apps and accessories and everything, this guy is another uh, top-notch figure from G.I. Joe Classified line. So now let's take a look at the Star Wars figures. So you can see here I've got a bunch of variations of Stormtroopers. Um, we'll talk about them in a second. The first one we're going to take a look at, though, is Tebow. So this is the new Ewok um, so he's in the six inch scale. He's the first Ewok uh, in the uh, six inch line, which seems like an odd choice because uh, Wicket is the Ewok that most people know. And he seems like the more obvious choice, but uh, I'm fine with uh, Tebow as the first choice. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to get any of the Ewoks because when I started collecting the Black Series, I kind of made a little promise to myself that I wasn't just going to buy every single character that they put out. I have way too many of the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures, just bins full of them, and they're not on display anywhere. So when I started collecting Star Wars again, I was like, I'm only going to buy the coolest looking robots and aliens. 
Now, I have definitely gotten away from that, but I still don't buy a lot of the figures, especially a lot of the human characters. When it comes to like Luke and Han and Leia, I usually pass on them. And I've passed on some of the other iconic characters too. I actually don't have an R2-D2 or a C-3PO or a Chewbacca. I usually just buy the bad guys, robots, bounty hunters, things like that. So I knew they would put out Ewoks eventually, and I really didn't know what category they fell into. Because sure, they're aliens, but I wouldn't exactly call the Ewoks cool looking. So I really didn't know if I needed them. And I still don't know if I'll buy the other Ewoks. I'm sure they're eventually going to do Low Grey and Wicket and Chief Chirpa, and maybe even some other guys that we haven't had figures of before. But I decided, since this was the first one, I would give him a chance and see what I think. And I do like it. One of the things I like about it is that his face... I feel it's the most true-looking Ewok that we've gotten thus far. In that he's kind of almost not cute. Like that little pig nose. Um, see, because the Ewok figures that I had when I was a kid, I didn't actually have Tebow. My brother had Tebow, but I had Low Grey. And so here's Low Grey. And so yeah, this is from the vintage Kenner line. I guess he's not super cute either. But I know the Wicked figure, which I also had, he kind of looked like a cute little teddy bear. And then here's a more modern low gray figure from, I don't know, the late 90s or early 2000s. Again, he's still kind of cute. So I like that this guy, he's got that kind of more, I don't know, an uglier little face. But uh, anyway, the detail on this guy is really nice. You can see he's got the hat, which is like a skinned warthog kind of hat. And uh, got the teeth necklace. He's got like two different necklaces on there, I think. He's got a couple different straps on there. He's got a spear. He's got a little, uh, what's it, a little dagger that can be sheathed on there. Another spear. So one's more of a club and one's a spear. Um, so it's a lot of nice little detail. And he's got some good articulation. At least he's got lots of joints. I don't know how much you can really move them. But you can see he's got ankle articulation, knee, uh, good range of motion there. I guess you can kind of do the splits. Got a swivel at the waist, shoulders, wrists, elbows, neck. So yeah, not bad. Definitely the most articulated Ewok I think we've ever had. And uh, he looks good. So I'm happy that I picked up one of these guys. I wish they weren't the same price. Since they're about half the size of the other figures, I almost feel that they should maybe sell these guys two per pack. And if they did that, I actually wouldn't even mind if they backed up the articulation a little bit. Like maybe took away their their knees or their ankles and said okay we're gonna make these guys a little cheaper but you get two Ewoks in every pack because yeah paying 30 bucks for half a figure kind of sucks that's one of the reasons why I didn't buy R2-D2 or Yoda uh, because they package them individually but with uh, Tebow here I took a chance and he's not too bad so let's set him aside and then we'll talk about these various stormtroopers so first let's take a look at uh, what's his name Captain Pyre I think so he has got that modern Stormtrooper look. So this is the look from the uh, the new sequel trilogy. So like here's the Stormtrooper from that line. And you can see here how similar he is as far as mask design and armor design. There's probably a lot of shared pieces from one figure to the next here. Um, one of the things that stands out on Captain Pyre, obviously, is the paint job. But then he's also got this little shoulder plate here which we saw on the vintage stormtroopers to designate when they were like sand troopers i don't know if it really means that a certain rank or anything applies to it and uh yeah for weapons he's got this little pistol which is also gold he's got another even smaller pistol and it just kind of clips onto his leg there's a hole there and a little peg on the gun which is fine but i'm sure that's going to fall off especially if you were playing with these things so i'd rather there be a holster so I'm not sure why they went with that. Most of the other Stormtroopers do have holsters on their belts. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. I do like the uh, the gold design. Now, he does seem a little short. Especially, I know Phasma was supposed to be a big character. But if I bring Phasma in here. Whoop, she kind of towers over the Stormtrooper, which seemed appropriate. But considering this guy is also a, a captain, he seems like a bit of a runt next to Phasma. I feel maybe he should be a little bit bigger. Now while we have all the captains lined up, hanging out together, let's take a look at Captain Cardinal. No, here, put, I'll put these guys back here for a second. So here's Captain Cardinal. Again, he kind of looks a lot like Captain Phasma, Captain Pyre, 
except this time it's in this bright crimson red. And this is the first one that's got a soft goods, like cloth cape, which I don't know if I like better. Like Phasma's got a hard plastic, well, not hard, but soft plastic, like it moves, but it's a sculpted piece so that it doesn't flow. Um, but with this one here, they could have done the same piece, but they gave him a piece of cloth that blows around. So it's not bad. I don't know if I really have a preference one way or the other. Sculpting wise, again, he looks a lot like Pyre and like the sequel trilogy Stormtrooper. Same helmet design, same as all that. Now this guy, even though those guys are kind of have the reflective silver and gold, I actually think this guy's the most dynamic looking of the bunch. It's very striking in that red armor. Um, the only problem with that is that we've already got, like we got the red Stormtroopers, what they called Sith Troopers, I think, from the last movie. And I even have a red Stormtrooper. Um, this is based on the original trilogy Stormtroopers. But when you already have a bunch of red Stormtroopers, it kind of diminishes the uniqueness of this particular guy. So he's cool, but he's not as special as he maybe could have been. All right, now let's actually take a look at this clone trooper here. So this guy, I think, is a relatively standard clone trooper. This is the clone trooper I'm used to seeing from the movies and from the TV show. And like I said earlier, I have a red one. They're very similar. You know, I thought maybe these dots on his chest represented a rank or something, but they both have four dots, so I don't know if that really means anything. One thing that's kind of a, that I do notice is the red on this guy is very crisp. Like the lines that separate the white from the red, everything's very smooth. Whereas the blue one, I don't know if it's intentional, but the paint's a little sloppier. There's some wear there. You can see where the it runs along there. It kind of almost looks, it looks like it was slapped on. And I actually thought it was intentional, um, but I'm not sure if it is. In which case, it just might be lazy painting by Hasbro. But anyway, I'm not sure if these figures share all the exact same parts. They probably do. They might have upgraded it. A little bit because these figures came out quite a few years apart but uh, regardless if you like clone troopers then I'm sure you'll like this guy too he looks all right now this other clone trooper the new one from Camino he's a little different you can tell that he's got new parts and just a different design the helmet is quite different he's a little smaller than those guys it was kind of like uh, in a video recently I reviewed the new stormtrooper figure that came out and uh, it seems like all the Black Series figures are maybe getting scaled down a little bit. They just seem a little bit shorter. And I guess that's not a big deal, but when you want them to be consistent with your previous figures, it is kind of noticeable when you've got one guy that's... Uh, and I don't know if you can really tell there. It's not like huge significance, but it's a, it's a bit. If these were real people, there'd probably be a couple of inches difference between these guys. But I really do like the look of this design. I like that, uh, that gray paint job. For accessories, he's got one pistol and he's got a large rifle. Now this guy does not have a holster or even a clip on his leg to hold one of his guns, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, it would be nice if you could holster the pistol and you could hold the rifle maybe. But uh, regardless, pretty cool. I like him. Although I kind of hope that uh, Hasbro gives me a break on these stormtroopers slash clone troopers sometime soon because I'm, I'm running out of space and I'm kind of tired of buying them. But anyway, this guy's pretty cool. So now let's take a look at my new Transformers. So first up here is Airwave. So like I said, this is a character I don't really know anything about, but I thought he was cool. I think this kind of, you know what's weird? I actually thought he had a kind of a cycloptic look to him. Like he had one big center eye. But it is only just now, as I brought him up close to camera, I realized he's got two yellow eyes. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if I like that design as much. I kind of liked him with the one big cycloptic eye, kind of like uh, Shockwave. Anyway, so, yeah, to my surprise, he has a little face in there with some eyes. So, this guy here. Um, so, yeah, he's listed as uh, Decepticon, which I, I don't know why, but when I look at this guy, he kind of looks more like an Autobot to me. Just something about his colors. They don't seem very, I don't know, menacing or something. So, uh, and he transforms into a, like a little, let's say a little air, uh, aircraft carrier, almost a little headquarters. And so what this guy is, is there was um, a series of Transformers called the Micromasters in the late 80s. 
Uh, I didn't. I wasn't really collecting Transformers anymore when they came out, but they were a bunch of these little teeny Transformers. And Hasbro made little headquarters for them as well. So things like little outposts and little bases and little ramps. And they were just intended to be that. They were little bases. Um, but now in the modern Earthrise line, what Hasbro is doing is taking some of those little bases and turning them into unique characters. So this guy here, rather than just straight up transform, you can break them apart very easily. Like his arms just pop right out of their sockets. And you kind of snap them apart and you can make multiple configurations out of him. One of them being um, that little base from, the, from 1989 that he's based on. And this isn't the first time they've done that. For example, the first wave of Earthrise figures had this guy here, Ironworks. So again, this was another character I wasn't familiar with. And the reason for that was that he was based on a little uh, outpost for the MicroMasters. But then he turned him into a character and he transforms into a little MicroMasters base. So that's pretty cool. I like when uh, they expand on the mythology and take something that you thought you knew and then they flip it on its side or whatever. So a cool figure. I'm happy to add both of these guys to my Transformer collection. I think this guy is pretty unique looking. And uh, so who else we got here? So the other one I got was Exhaust. So this guy you might not recognize either because he's a pretty obscure character. Uh, I won't even really be able to tell you much about him. Like, he's a redo of Wheeljack. He looks a lot like Wheeljack. Here's the Earthrise Wheeljack figure. So you can see he's pretty much the exact same front, back. The only real difference is Wheeljack, his face is kind of unique because he has that like kind of triple, I don't know what you'd call it, like face plate kind of over his mouth and nose. Whereas Exhaust, he's got kind of a similar design with this triple thing, but it's over his eyes. It almost looks like Snake Eyes' uh, kind of visor mask. Um, so this character, I think he was originally created kind of as a background character in some of the kind of more modern comics. I think he first appeared in Dreamwave comic books, which was the company that owned the license before IDW, the current license holder, took it over. Um, and then the Collector's Club... I think maybe ran with it and made a figure of him and he was based on some old Diaclone toy and uh, I don't really know his exact origins. Um, you can go read, there's a little bit of a bio for any one of these characters on like Transformers wiki page and stuff. But it's, a, it's an obscure character with kind of a, you know, a weird background. And, uh, but yeah, I think he's cool. I really like his design and I would much prefer this than a straight repaint of Wheeljack, because we do get a lot of just straight repaints in the Transformers toy line. So just the fact that they gave him this unique head um, really adds a lot to him. So yeah, I think he's pretty cool. Now another one that I actually didn't show you in the package, but there wasn't much to see, is this character here, Bug Bite. I actually got him in the last couple weeks as well. Um, and he is another one of the Select line, so same as Exhaust. He came in just like a plain brown like mailer box. And he might look familiar to you because he looks a lot like Bumblebee, but he's not. He's a whole different character. But basically what he is, is he's a repaint of the Earthrise Cliffjumper that we got previously. And we even already got Cliffjumper repainted into a Selects figure for Hubcap, which I showed you probably in just like my last, like a video or two ago. So these figures all transform into the same car, but they've given them different heads. So... Hubcap here has a unique head. Cliffjumper's got a unique head. So he's got the little horns. Cliffjumper and Bumblebee always had similar designs. But you can see how those are different. But when they do eventually put out a Bumblebee, I imagine it will have this shared head. Hopefully he doesn't transform into the exact same car. I hope they uh, tweak Bumblebee so he transforms into a Volkswagen like he's supposed to. But... Uh, yeah, this figure is pretty much the same. He's got uh, the same big cannon that both Cliffjumper and Hubcap came with. And, uh, yeah. So, we've seen this figure before. Um, as far as the background of this character, he's got a pretty complicated one as well. He appeared uh, in some, like, box set before he had a name. And then the name he was given was taken from a GoBot. And so the history they wrote for him was that he's actually a GoBot. Um, from like the Tonka universe of the 80s and he t traveled across dimensions over into the Hasbro Transformers universe and changed his look and 
I don't know. It's pretty complicated stuff. But uh, yeah, he's a pretty cool figure. So there you go. Those are my new Transformers. At least those are my newest transforming Transformers. The one other one I'm going to show you is the uh, reaction figure of Devastator. So here he is outside of the packaging. And as I mentioned before, I think he looks fantastic. He definitely lives up to my expectations. He looks a lot like he should, right from the animated series. Very simple, very blocky. And yeah, so as far as articulation goes, his arms go forward, his legs forward. They don't actually move back uh, because this kind of dump truck here kind of blocks them from going back there. But that's, uh, that's what they're supposed to do. They're just simple kind of Kenner style figures. And where I mentioned how he is bigger than the other reaction figures, let me just bring out one of the other reaction figures here. So here is Optimus Prime in his packaging. Here, actually, let me just clear these other dudes out of the way for a second. And we'll bring out Devastator's packaging again. So, don't know if you can see that, but the, so there's the difference in the cards. So Devastator is quite a bit bigger. Now what I do with these Transformer figures is I keep them so it looks like they're sealed on their card and I keep them pinned to the wall for display. But I do just kind of slice the side of the bubble there so I can pop the figures out. So there is Optimus. And if I bring Devastator back in here, again you can really see the, uh, the difference in the size there. So it's still not quite to scale. Devastator really would be quite a bit bigger than that. Um, but it works. I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. And this Devastator actually works really well with Hasbro's new uh, Red Series Transformers. Now, mind you, he'd be way out of scale. But the whole idea behind these Red Series figures is that they're six inches and they're supposed to look like the Transformers of the animated series. Uh, again, I apologize for my lighting here, but... What are you going to do? So yeah, where these guys look like they just left right off of the cartoon. This Devastator looks fantastic. Displayed next to the, the Red Series figures. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased with this guy. Really cool stuff. Alright, moving along. And again, i got to try and speed things up because this video is going to be super long. But uh, next thing we're going to take a look at is Rodan. So here is the display base that he comes with. So you can see that's supposed to be the... Uh, the top of the volcano which had a big kind of lid on it because that was where a monarch base was located and then there's a big explosion now this i had a hard time getting this explosion actually plugged into it and i'm still not sure i've got it right because it doesn't seem to be like i can lift it up so it's, it is plugged in there but uh yeah on the packaging it almost looked like you could put a battery or something in this and it would light up because they had this explosion which is molded in like kind of a translucent yellow plastic it looked like a lit up and it looked like a really cool explosion, but you don't really get that effect here. It doesn't look quite as good. And then this pole here, you plug that into the explosion, but I'm having a hard time getting that to stay up straight. The whole thing kind of teeters and totters. And then Rodan here is supposed to sit on top of that. And I'm not sure the best way to get him to do that. The Mothra figure does something similar, but uh, Mothra stays on there pretty good. Uh, Rodan, I'm having a little harder time with him. But uh, let's push that aside and take a look at Rodan. So a lot of nice detail here. You can see he's got that kind of like burning rock design, kind of a magma look to his wings. And that comes right across his back. And let's take a look at the front. So yeah, really nice paint job. Really nice sculpting. So for articulation, his wings, they kind of fold like so, so there's a little joint there for his hands. So it moves like that, so you can kind of tuck him away a little bit. Um, the arms, so he's got joints there on the arms, so they can fold down pretty flat or come up. They don't really come up any higher than that, so he can't like lift his wings up like this. They kind of either hover level or they droop down. Um, his legs. So he's got a little bit of articulation on these legs. Not much though. So they kind of move forward and backwards. They're not on ball joints, I don't think, so there's not much movement there. 
And then his head, he's going to joint here, right at the base of his head, and also at the base of his neck. So it's two points of articulation there. And he looks really good. Like the sculpting looks nice. <coughs> and he actually does have an alternate head. This will probably be the head I choose to display on him. This is kind of a screaming, angry head with the open mouth. So I don't know how easy it is to swap. I'll try that later, probably. But it's nice to have the option. Anyway, so it's a cool figure, except, like I said, when I try to balance it on here, I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to work. I'm having a little trouble. And also, I find his wings seem really heavy. When you display him like that, if you want his wings to stay upright, they kind of automatically droop down. They're, they're too heavy for the joint. So that's kind of too bad as well, because it makes for a less dynamic pose, seeing Rodan with his wings all droopy, as opposed to having them out and dynamic. But uh, anyway, maybe there's a better way to... I might just have to mess around with it a little bit. But anyway, if you're, if you're curious about the scale... So there's Rodan. Let's bring in Godzilla from that movie. So there you go. So this is what I was talking about in the introduction about being hard to justify the price of this figure because these figures cost the same amount of money. And when you see them with the base and with the large wings, you know, maybe maybe you can justify it. But like the figure itself, um, like Rodan is just a, he's a pretty teeny little guy really when compared to Godzilla. So I would have been nice to see these guys maybe be a little more affordable. But uh, anyway, it's not a bad figure. And considering the only other Rodan figure I have in my collection is this big, hollow, stupid, plastic-looking, like, piggy bank thing um, based on his look from the Toho movies, it's kind of nice to finally upgrade my Rodan to something cool-looking. So yeah, a cool figure. But yeah, he could probably be a little better. So finally, we're ready to move on to Marvel Legends, and we'll wrap this video up. So here we have the Deluxe Toxin. So you can see he's a pretty crazy figure. The design of his face is pretty hardcore. Lots of sculpted weird detail in there. All this crazy stuff on his back that you had to kind of plug in. So this is kind of the symbiote going crazy. It's got all these extra little, little mouths with teeth and stuff coming off of it. It's a pretty cool design. It's a lot more intense than the previous Toxin figure we had. So this guy here, he looked pretty crazy too. He had a pretty crazed look on his face. And he had some of that little wiry stuff coming off of his back. But comparatively, yeah, he's got nothing on this new version. Uh, they're both cool, but if you don't have this guy, then uh, yeah, I think this guy will meet your toxin demands. Now this guy is largely based off of the Monster Venom figure. So let's bring him in here to compare. So you can see here, most of that body is reuse from this figure. So he's got the same arms, the same feet, the same torso. I think maybe the back piece of the torso is different, but even that might be the same. It's really, the size different kind of comes from the fact that he's only got a couple of little tendrils to plug in here, but this guy's got a huge, crazy mess of tendrils. Plus the head on Toxin is quite a bit bigger. So... Overall, Toxin's pretty cool. Uh, as far as articulation and all that stuff goes, I'm not going to bother going into that for all these figures. But if you have the previously released Monster Venom figure, then you know what to expect with uh, Toxin. Now, let's keep Venom on hand. We'll move Toxin out of the way because we'll bring in this new, new Venom here to talk about. So this one here is based off of the movie that's with uh, Tom Hardy that came out a couple of years ago now. So they're a little late on this but uh, I am excited about this figure it is pretty cool I did like that movie like it was by no means great but it was fun uh, I enjoyed watching it and I'm, I'm looking forward to them doing a second one with Carnage but yeah this is a cool figure he's got a lot of articulation like uh, he's got this little ab crunch here which can bring him pretty far forward and back and he's got the joint here on his torso um, so yeah, he's got a, a, lot, a lot of good range of movement here. I like it a lot. And the size of this guy, he's really tall too, because Venom was really big in that movie. And it might be a little hard to tell next to Monster Venom, 
But if I bring in uh, just another Venom figure from the standard Marvel Legends line, you can see the difference there. And, uh, yeah, this guy really towers over the other Venom. And this Venom was pretty big, even as far as Marvel Legends go. Like, he was bigger than some of the other characters. So, yeah, the fact that this guy towers over him, yeah, he's going to be one of the larger Marvel Legends on your shelf. Other than maybe some of the Build-A-Figures and Deluxe Figures. Now, he had a couple, uh, I think he had some extra hands. You'll see here I've got open hands for both of them, but he had two fists as well, I believe. And he also has his extra head with the tongue hanging out. So you can display him whichever way you prefer. I like them both, but I think I'll probably stick with uh, with this mouth design. So let's move on to Carnage. So this here is a brand new Carnage. All the pieces are completely new. So he's really cool. I like him a lot. Um, I'll bring up the other Carnage figure because that'll really help you understand what's different about this one. Because I really liked the other Carnage figure. So here's the original Carnage release. And this one here really looks like how Carnage appeared in his first appearance. Just the way his body's colored with all red with the black swirls. The way the, the head is designed. This is classic Carnage. But in the more modern Carnage appearances, especially Absolute Carnage, which was a big storyline from, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago. Um, Carnage had gone through this kind of radical redesign. And so the biggest difference is the head. So you can see he's got that swirly thing going in his head. It's just the overall look of him is fairly different. Now this figure actually did come with a more classically designed head, but it's not the same head as that figure here because the big difference with this figure is all this black stuff on him, it's sculpted. So you can run your finger along there. You can feel all that stuff all down his, like his toes. That's another thing. He has toes. Um, the other figure, he had more of those kind of like sock like feet. And you can see how that black is all just painted onto him. So they could have used the same body for like a Spider-Man figure, say, but and then just painted that black on there. But this figure here, this is pretty uniquely Carnage. I can't imagine how they're going to use this for anybody else because it's got that really kind of gross looking black veiny stuff all over him. And it makes for a really cool look. And I really like this new head design too. Um, these tendrils, everything looks really great. Um, the only thing I feel they kind of missed the mark on this figure, and I think they even addressed it, is that they uh, started making this figure and put it into production before Absolute Carnage, the storyline, was kind of finalized. And the final look for Carnage in that book, uh, his body was quite a bit different because Carnage was dead and he's back from the dead. He's almost like zombie Carnage. So you, his, uh, other than his like kind of pectoral muscles there, then you just saw his like spine connecting his top half to his lower half. He was kind of all hollowed out here in the middle and he was actually a little bit taller. So it would have been nice and it really would have made this figure, figure even more distinct from the previous versions if they had done that kind of gross skeletal design on Carnage. And like I said, I think they would have had the designs been finalized before the figure went into production. But even that gripe aside, I still think this is a fantastic figure and it's worth getting even if you have the uh, previous Carnage re releases. So here's Pyro. And Pyro looks great. I really like that head sculpt on him. And he actually comes with an alternate head sculpt. So you've got this head here with the smiling face. So if you want kind of a more sinister sneer, you can do that. Um, I think I prefer this one. He's still sneering in this one, but it's a little more subtle. Um, you can see that hose is there. Go right into his backpack. Looks really great. The other accessories that he came with were a couple of these translucent flames. So you can attach those to his fists. And that works quite well to kind of demonstrate his powers of fire manipulation. And yeah, I've always liked this character. Um, he's one of my favorite X-Men villains. And I haven't had a pyro figure since the 90s when this figure came out as part of the animated uh, X-Men line from Toy Biz. So it's really nice to finally upgrade this guy. Even though this is a good figure in its own right. But uh, yeah, it was time for an upgrade. And I'm glad that I finally got this new version. So here's the Rogue that came packaged with Pyro. So she had some extra hands. And she also had an alternate head. Which has got kind of an angrier expression on her face. So you can choose to display either one of those. Uh, I don't really have a preference, um, but overall this figure, even though it's a nice figure, 
Uh, I prefer this Rogue here. This is the Rogue that was kind of more based on the Jim Lee design from the 90s. And that's the Rogue that I kind of grew up with. I didn't read X-Men comic books whenever she made the switch to this outfit. Um, I don't know if this is what she's currently wearing. I don't think so. I think she probably moved on from this one already, even though it is a more contemporary outfit. But, uh, so yeah, fine figure. Again, I'm not going to get into the, all the articulation and all that sort of stuff, but uh, both of them are decent, so whichever your preference, I suppose. Now here is Thunderbird. So we'll get a nice close look at him. Nice expression sculpted in the face there. Now, this figure, it's cool because it's Thunderbird, and we haven't had a Thunderbird before, uh, at least not in a long time. But it's got its flaws. I feel like he's using some older body parts, and so I don't think he's necessarily got the best proportions. Um, I also don't like these things. Like, these are supposed to be at the top of his boots. They've used these before on Forge and similar things on, like, Cyclops. And I wish they had just sculpted them attached because they're always drooping and hanging down to the bottom. So, yeah, that's a little bit frustrating. But overall, I think he looks pretty cool. It's a good design. Um, having gutting Warpath uh, very recently, the two look really nice displayed together as Warpath is Thunderbird's younger brother. So here we go. You can see the, the similarities in their designs. So it's nice to add both these characters to my collection right around the same time. All right, let's move on. This here is the Storm figure that came packaged with Thunderbird. Uh, I absolutely love this figure. This is a contender for me for maybe not figure of the year, but uh, she'll definitely be on my best of list, I would say. She just looks great. All that sculpting in that hair just looks fantastic. The face sculpt is very attractive. Just really, really nice. And I like that she has the two alternate so she, this is her wind-blown hair, and yet I've got her with her kind of uh, settled cape. I think probably you would choose to display, if you had her wind-blown hair, this is her wind-blown cape. And if you wanted to display her with her kind of calm cape, you could display her with her calm face and calm hair, which is also got another beautiful sculpt on it. Um, so the thing is, you have to pop her head off, and then you can pop the cape off. So when I went to change her, I, I took off, because she came packaged with the angry face and the angry cape. So I took the head off, I took the cape off, intending to display her with both of the calmer pieces. So I put the cape on, but I could not for the life of me get this head onto her. I don't know if that's going to be an issue unique to me or if everybody's going to have that same problem. You might have to take a hair dryer or something to it to maybe loosen up the plastic, but I definitely couldn't get this on the peg. I don't know if I'll even bother with the hairdryer. I might just decide to display her like this, even though I had originally intended to display her with the other head. But both look great. Um, beautiful, beautiful figure. Uh, she's got some extra pieces as well. She's got some fist hands. Like you see, I've got her displayed with one open hand and, uh, and one fisted hand. But she also comes with two of these hands. So these are hands with like lightning effects because as you know, Storm can control the weather. So that's really cool. So she's got lots of display options. Looks really good, but uh, since we're pressed for time, we're just gonna move on. So here is Psylocke. So it's a nice looking figure. Nice face sculpt. It's got some cool accessories. She's got her kind of like a, I don't know, psychic dagger or whatever she can do with her energy. She's got her sword with kind of the energy flowing around it. Um, she's also got her little mask of like psychic energy that can snap onto her head. And it's kind of nice that that just kind of holds in place very steadily, but there's no holes or anything that have to plug into her forehead. So that's nice. So yeah, it's uh, the costume's pretty basic, just a solid black cat suit with some of these like rectangles kind of needlessly cut it. Um, it's a fine figure, but I think I do prefer this Psylocke, because again, this is just the costume I'm more familiar with. This is what she was wearing when I was reading the X-Men. Even though it might be hard to tell in this light, the one thing that bothered me about this figure is that it comes with black hair. Um, I always associate Psylocke with purple hair. Um, it, she might have had the black hair at one point, but I don't even remember. Purple hair is the way I remember her. So even though it's subtle here, these almost look like they have the same hair color. If we get up close, you'll see that this figure actually has purple hair. And I think it would look probably better if I put this head on this body, that's what I might choose to do because I definitely prefer the uh, the purple hair, even though the head sculpts are the same otherwise. 
The only issue might be, I think the skin tones are a little bit different on these two figures. This one here is maybe a little more tanned, so it might not work out. But uh, regardless, it's a decent Psylocke figure, even though it was one I didn't... I probably would not have bought if it just came packaged on its own. Here's Phantom X. Um, so, I don't have a whole lot to say about this guy. Like, he looks cool. I just don't know anything about the character. And I tried to read his uh, Wikipedia page, and it was just fucking nuts. So, yeah, go ahead and try and figure this guy out if you can. But, uh, anyway, he's got the same trench coat we've seen a few times before. I think probably Nick Fury, Multiple Man, Spider-Man Noir all have the same trench coat. Uh, he's got these same foot dangly things. These are more the type that Cyclops had. So I don't even know why you'd bother. I kind of just wish they didn't even put them on there. But they're clearly supposed to be at the top of his boot and you, that they just fall around like anklets. And it kind of drives me crazy. There's a lot of figures that have that. Um, so yeah, he's a cool looking figure. I like his guns. I like that he's got these little removable blast effects. Um, he might have had swappable hands. I don't even remember. But uh, the hands, like the guns fit in there with the little trigger fingers and everything. So that all looks good. So yeah, if you like this guy, then I think you'll be happy with this figure. Now here's the real star of that three pack. So this is Nimrod. He came packaged with Psylocke and Phantom X. So this guy is a big beefy dude. Um, like if we bring in Phantom X again, you'll see just how much bigger Nimrod is than this guy. Um, he's very simple, you know, very basic pearly white with some pink highlights. Um, he's got some various accessories. Um, I don't really remember him using this, but it looks like he's almost got like a, I don't know, wings, a little jetpack or something. So that snaps onto his back. He's also got some cool blast effects. And you can put that into his, the palm of his hand here. So yeah, it kind of looks like he's zapping you. And he does have uh, alternate hands. So you see I've got him displayed with one fist and one open hand. He's got other hands as well. So you can have two open hands. And they both have blast effects. So you can have him double blasting if you need to. Uh, or you can have him with two fists. And he's also got alternative heads. So I like this here, the pink head. I think it's nice and uh, kind of bold. It's hard to get a close up here. but He also has this head which has got a silver faceplate with kind of a pink border to it. Um, so I'm sure both have accurate appearances, but this is the one that I remember. So I'm going to choose to keep him with the pink face. Uh, but yeah, great figure. I, I love the big bulkiness of him. I like the just the pearly whiteness of him. He stands out from all the other figures on my shelf. Very cool. like him a lot. And I think this is the last thing I have to show you. It wouldn't surprise me if I missed something here, but uh, I think this is everything. So this is the Silver Centurion Iron Man. So as I said, he's based on the same kind of body that was used on the 80th anniversary classic Iron Man, which I've got right here. So this was a favorite figure of mine last year. Um, you know, some of you people that grew up watching the movies, you might like your Iron Man's a little bit more, I don't know, full of lines and more realistic because... It never really made sense. How come a guy could wear a metal costume and still bend at the elbows and bend at the knees? It didn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's what I grew up with. That's how I like my Iron Man. I don't really need him to look like super... It's like the Transformer movies. I like my Transformers blocky and simple. It might not make as much sense. Michael Bay's Transformer designs probably do make more sense. But they're way too busy and I don't like them. With my Iron Man, I, I do like how he looks in the movies. But I prefer this more simple look. And even though this is a fantastic figure, this is the Iron Man that I was first introduced to when I started reading comic books. So I really love this Silver Centurion armor. It really kind of hits me right in that nostalgic spot. Now, yeah, you know he's got a whole bunch of accessories. I showed you him in the package, so he's got all kinds of different blast effects, uh, alternate hands. Um, I'm not going to bother breaking all that stuff out. Um, I really like the figure. One thing I don't necessarily love is the way his eyes are painted doesn't look too bad actually now that I'm looking at through the camera but it's it's kind of solid white on the package the way it showed it it's like his eyes were blacked out with just a white dot so kind of like the white dot was like his pupil um, here they just kind of went with solid white I don't know why it wouldn't just be solid black um, so yeah I don't necessarily like that but that's a minor gripe otherwise um, yeah most of the figures are the same I think it's probably a different chest 
piece because this is sculpted right in here. So different chest. Um, actually, the, the lower arms here are different because you can see the gauntlets are different from that Iron Man. You know what? Actually, a lot more pieces are different here than I initially thought because the, uh, the crotch piece is different. The boots, at least the top half of the boots, so the lower legs are different. But uh, they're both great figures. Now, this one was on my best of the year list last year. I don't know if this one would make it just because even though it's fantastic, it is something I've kind of already seen before, um, but I really do love it. The only version of this figure I had before was this three and three quarter inch version, which is nice, but I was ready for an upgrade. So yeah, I think this new Silver Centurion is really cool. Um, so yeah, I think I'm ready to wrap this up. Okay, so that was episode 100 and you saw all my newest toys. You're all up to date on my collection. Um, so thank you very much for watching. You know, getting to 100 episodes, I didn't know if I'd ever really get there. Um, so it's, it's a pretty cool accomplishment. Uh, I've got over 600 subscribers on here, so thank you so much for that. And another milestone I was hoping to brag about on my 100th episode was that I recently uh, passed the mark of 100,000 views on YouTube. So that's the combination of all 100 videos. Um, but yeah, over 100,000 views. So that's, that's awesome. Um, and I was kind of, I've been monitoring it because I was thinking, oh, I'm going to post episode 100. It'll suck if I don't quite get to 100,000 by the time I get to my 100th episode. And then one day I just looked and I was like 1,140 or something. So like overnight I just shot past the 100,000 mark. So uh, that's really cool. Thank you so much for watching. Even if you only watched the opening five minutes of these things, I still appreciate it. Um, and as always... Please leave me questions and comments uh, if you have some suggestions for videos. Um, I don't get those very often, but there are some people that have um, kind of piped up and asked me to do certain things, and uh, you know, it's always in the back of my mind. Uh, I'm always just getting so much new stuff that it's hard for me to do a video that focuses on some old collection because I'm always so busy doing videos just to show you what new stuff has come in. But uh, yeah, hopefully as that stuff slows down a little bit, maybe after the holidays, I can get back to doing some videos focusing on some specific collections so yeah if you have any suggestions let me know um and uh yeah i'll see you soon hopefully with that snake mountain video so uh again thank you for watching and i will see you next time